When trying to learn about where the critical elements in our design are, it's important that we look back at failures or near misses to see what caused them and how we can avoid them in our design. And this comes us into a perfect example of an organization called Cross, who get enormous tips and put out monthly newsletters about the near misses and failures that they've seen around the world. And they've put together a great article about the design of cantilever structures and the specific elements for different structures such as steel, timber, and even concrete elements to make sure we're detailing them effectively. So what are the key elements that we need to consider? Let's start off one of the most basic ones, which would be a cantilever steel frame. There's two ways that they can be applied to a structure. Typically, you might just have a steel structure and cantilever it off that point. Or maybe you've got a steel frame and bolting it to a specific area. A lot of time, you are making that steel structure as it typically can span further and is lighter, but it's subject to a couple of critical things. Well, first up, especially if it's to a steel structure, your anchors are typically post-fixed. Now, this can be a significant problem, especially for epoxy. Now, most people wouldn't think about something that's cantilevering out having permanent tension. But when you look at the design, the top is always going to be in tension. And epoxy anchors are typically notorious for bad for that creep deformation. So typically, you either have to reduce the force so they're not near their peak design or use specific epoxies as well. Some epoxies can't be applied under permanent tension as they're specifically susceptible to long-term epoxy creep. And then another thing that's super critical that I've also seen in a couple of different projects is the fact that sometimes those anchors are not specifically installed correctly. And someone doesn't actually know the actual real consideration and the problems behind it. If they don't drill and clean out the area specifically, you may see localized failures and pullouts even if the design was specifically done properly. That's something that you need to watch out for, especially when you're detailing them. Can I get away with a different type of anchor? Can I look at a cast in ferrule or something that's bolted onto the reinforcement? So I'm not relying on the epoxy. Another critical element when you're also designing for that steel frame, as they are cantilevering out, you've got to make sure that you've got any lateral shear that may be in there. And that might induce torsion. So are you using the right members in the right situation? Is there a torsion induced? Because if you're using an I section, you might lead to a failure through some secondary torsion actions that have been twisting the structure. If you're bolting steel to steel, other considerations that you should look into is either preloading bolts to make sure when it does elongate, you don't see additional slippage or rotation. So you might need to make sure that you're actually designing the connections as friction tight or connections that can limit the specific slippage in that junction. As a little bit of rotation can lead to over movements and lead to secondary actions that may cause damage to that localized balcony. And when you're going to that steel frame, the other one I was saying benefit was it being light means you can span further but it does mean that the finishes are gonna have a greater proportion of the overall load on the element. So making sure that people aren't putting big pot plants up there, or if you're designing the loads on top of it, making sure you're not underestimating the screed of tile, as they make up a greater proportion of the design loads that the structure is gonna see. Coming hand in hand with that reduced lightness of the structure is the fact that that might be more susceptible to a little vibration movement. As you have a lighter structure, it means people can more actively move those areas, especially if it's made as an entertaining area, making sure that you're carefully checking your natural frequencies to make sure you're not too low, to make sure it won't be susceptible to human-induced vibration. Well, the next common type of cantilever balconies is your RC structure. It's quite easy to design an RC structure and to detail it out effectively. But again, there's a couple of things that we need to consider here. Well, first up, as it's cantilevering out, what's the member that it's attached to and where is it applied? Is it applied right through so we can deal with purely in bending moments? But typically, you set it down a little bit because you want to have drainage and you want to have a flush exit. So that means there's potentially additional torsion actions that the back beam needs to support to resist the actions that couldn't be supported by bending moments. Because if you're detailing effectively, you'll have a torsion action. And we all know that torsion is the bane of all engineers. So you need to make sure we're specifically detailing for that torsion and making sure the low path is continued all the way to the footings. As it does have that single point of failure, you want to see big warning signs before the failure actually occurs. So that means specifically detailing the steel so it is ductile and can hold together so you can see significant cracking before a catastrophic event. And as typically balconies are external and cantilevering off an element, they need to be carefully considered about the waterproofing and protection of the top of the structure. As typically the forces at the top of the structure is where you're seeing the cracking occurring as that's the tension phase. And that's the phase that needs to be protected from the weather. So you wanna make sure that you're increasing your covers by applying specific membranes and protecting the top of the structure to make sure that it doesn't see stresses and the reinforcement underneath corrode. As the reinforcement is highly stressed, a little bit of corrosion after a long period of time can lead to catastrophic consequences. And we've seen this in the past through concrete cancer and other elements which rot out a cantilever element slowly from the inside. 
Another thing that's actually coming more and more important, especially on cantilever balconies, is completely external. Is having an external thermal break to make sure you're not bridging the cold from the outside into the inside. It's not something they quite often do in Australia, but it's something that we should move forward and do more often. As we're trying to reduce the embodied carbon on our structures, we need to make sure our buildings are more safe. So by creating a bridge between the internal and external means that you don't have the cold concrete outside propagating inside and you're either losing thermal mass as the structure needs to keep heating up or cooling down inside and causing water ingress problems. And if you are looking to change the concrete gate, the one good place to do that is in the connection. In the connection, why you might ask, well, it means that you can make sure that that specific location is susceptible and you can see the damage before it's too late. Where if you over strengthen that area, especially if it becomes a high strength concrete, it can lead to a brittle catastrophic collapse instantaneously. So it won't actually crack before it's too late. Another critical one for those cantilever balconies is making sure that you're propping for a little bit of additional time. It's typically you crack concrete props quite early so you can make sure the structure is loaded up sooner. That does mean it's more susceptible to early age cracking. So on balconies, although you might try and crack them after four days on a typical structure, we wanna make sure the balconies tighten up for at least a couple more days. Wherever possible, trying to leave it upwards of 14 days to make sure the concrete in that area has actually had time to settle and get to the strength that it needs to before it sees any additional load. And this bit gets even more important, especially when we're detailing the structure for precast elements. Precast elements have a hard enough time through design efficiencies and already have a lot of flaws as they're critical at those connection junctions. So if we're going down the precast element as we need to have a more efficient structural design, you need to be even more carefully detailing these connections for your precast elements. And one of the most common forms of construction, especially in residential, is your timber balcony. As it's quick, easy, efficient, anyone can put it together. So we're going back to the same problems we're having in RC design, making sure we're detailing the connections effectively, making sure that protection from weather, as a lot of time timber is susceptible to rot, to making sure around the connections we've got enough weather proofing, especially around the junctions. With timber, as it does age over time, means that you will need to have additional inspections of those locations, which might need additional repair work. And again, it has also the same problems that you have with steel design as well. As it is lighter, it means that the finishes and other pieces will make a greater proportion of the load that's applied to the structure to make sure you're correctly assessing the loads that are on that element. And if you're interested about learning more about failures and why engineers need to design from, I've got a perfect video about do engineers actually over-design structures? And if you're interested in supporting this channel, there's two ways that you can do this. You can either look for the link in my below description to my Patreon or become a YouTube member. Without the support of my patrons or YouTube members, this type of content would not be possible. As always, stay safe, keep learning, and I'll see you next week. Bye.